Hello guys, this is the Hexagon Zero, and welcome back to another episode of Multiplayer Mondays. Alrighty then, we are here on the new map, Wavebreaker, playing the Carrier Assault game mode, and I'm using the UMP-9, which is the special assignment unlock for the Engineer class, with a suppressor and reflex sight on it, and a, a reed adaptive camo? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Anyway. So it's not the UMP-45, it's actually better than the UMP-45 in a number of categories, categories including fire rate, range, and stability. And, uh, yeah, anyway, this map, Wavebreaker, as you can probably tell by the sand, or, in other words, the beige-colored texture beneath me, is very big. So, obviously, if they put all the textures on it, there would be slight issues with frame rate. So they've detexturized some things, and you can see there the sand just kind of edited itself back in because I had been in the area long enough to quantify a, or for to qualify for a load time. But yeah, anyway, so the entire point of this game mode, if you haven't already seen my four commander mode episodes, is to capture these points that are kind of like they run along the same process as conquest points and they will fire missiles at the enemy carrier as, as, as providing they're controlled by you or your team and once the enemy car carrier reaches 50% uh, health it will crack open and you are able to bring soldiers onto the inside of it and then destroy the two MCOMs inside so that's the basis of it um, it's happened multiple times before but we have had places where you haven't been able to arm the MCOMs, because you guys know rush. That's essentially what it is. It's it's rush mode with slight more complications because you're in a carrier and it's small spaces and there's currently lighting glitches when you transition from inside of the carrier to outside of the carrier, which they kind of need to fix because it's kind of starting to piss me off. Anyway, I have never actually landed a straw hit on a helicopter, and I tried to do something sneaky here. I tried to loop it back around towards the ground, but that doesn't end up working. Um, and that's actually my straw bullet impacting right there. Uh, but he does. He somehow manages to ping that, um, that uh, attack chopper, or is it a little bird? Either way. Um, so the attack boats are numerous on this map, as you can probably tell by the fact that the DLC is called Naval Strike. So, yeah, there's lots of attack boats, and my official recommendation is, unless you are driving the attack boat, get the fuck out. <laughs> because if you are riding on either one of the turrets, or if you're just riding as a passenger on the back, you're gonna die within two minutes. There is no question, unless your driver is really, really good. You're gonna die in two minutes. How did I know that? Well, the UMP-9 means that you have to get 50 repair ribbons. And so while doing those, I was repairing little birds, I was repairing trans transport choppers, I was repairing attack boats, I was repairing fucking rib boats. That's how desperate I was. And it completely killed my KD ratio. Not completely killed it, actually, I'm still at a 1.62. But I was at a 1.64 when I started, now I'm at 1.62. See, I, I actually land a hit here, but... I don't. The, I know the straw isn't as powerful as the RPG when it comes to rib boats, but hey, come on. Anyways, so I really like this new game mode. Uh, I think it's one of the more brilliant ones. And it's probably why they brought it back in Naval Strike. Um, it the matches don't take that long, as you can probably tell from the video length. This video is only like 11, maybe 13, 11 to 13 minutes. So it's not that time consuming. It, I affected I played this from 8:32 to about 9:50 this morning. And it would it worked fine. Um, anyway, here I've swapped classes over to the assault class and I'm using the new AR160 which is you in order to unlock it you have got to get marksman ribbons which essentially means you've got to get headshots with an assault rifle. Um, at least I think that's what marksman ribbons mean. No, it's not Marksman Ribbon. Yeah, maybe it's Marksman Ribbons. No, it's Headshot Ribbons with Assault Rifles, not Marksman Ribbons. That's it. And I've got no attachment for it, s attachments for it, so that's why it's got the iron sights equipped. But I actually like this gun. It's got a decent fire rate with a nice punch, and as, as long as I attach some um, attachments to it, obviously, it will be very effective in the recoil department. And also the reload time isn't the half isn't half bad either, although the long reload kind of sucks. But, yeah, you know. I guess it all kind of evens out. 
So, right now, there's actually, there's an outside portion, as you've been seeing for most of the video, then there was that inside portion on Wavebreaker, just kind of like a hangar. And, um, you essentially fight, and the level, the main evolution for the level is inside of the hangar. Unfortunately, I do not get to catch it in this episode, because I think it's actually already been triggered, because it's fairly easy to do. Essentially, I believe there's a submarine on the inside that blows up or something like that? I don't know. Yeah, it, it reminds me of the Zavod 311 Levolution, you know, it's kind of a button you press, you wait a minute and 30 seconds, and boom. <laughs> anyway, that's the enemy carrier actually off in the distance here, so this point is kind of highly contested for the enemy as it represents their in to the inside of these three objectives. And these three objectives are really all you need to hold to win. Now, fortunately, we managed to maintain an almost monopoly over all the points except for G, and we occasionally lose the other outlier, but we d I don't think we ever lose these three on the inside, which is good, because that's three missile batteries, and that means that we will kill the enemy carrier faster. Um, there are still issues with lag. Uh, this is Keep in mind, this is a Battlefield 4 PC version, so there's going to be issues. But anyway, on each of the... Uh, at least on this entrance, there is a kind of a doorway, and some people have used it to destroy um, attack boats as they try and run in, but most of the time it ends up being a choke point. As you can see here, there's a whole bunch of guards, uh, not guards, a whole bunch of people lined up outside of there. And unfortunately, I can't see much through the iron sights on this thing. And the, I I'm still learning to control the recoil, so I don't hit much. I managed to get two kills, I think, before he lowers it again. Because there's a control over on the opposite side of the water. So, yeah. The only downside about this weapon, as with most weapons in Battlefield 4, is the ammo capacity. Unless you're using an LMG or a sniper rifle. Uh, the ammo I seem to run out of ammo pretty quickly. You can see there from the water effect, you can see the line where they stopped doing waves, which is just inside. And that's a little sloppy, but for the amount of water that's on this map, uh, I don't blame them. It's, it, it's kind of hard to deal with. Anyway, so I really like this gun. It's very accurate. The accuracy on this gun is incredible. You could tell it from the crosshairs, but it's pretty pretty good, actually. And if you, if you switch it to single fire mode, like I do here, actually, it becomes a sniping machine, because it, the recoil resets itself almost immediately. I mean, I was thinking if you slapped an angled grip on this thing, maybe an ACOG sight, and... Uh, what else is there? Maybe a laser sight or something like that? It would be a very effective close range to the long range weapon. Or fine, maybe medium range to long range. Uh, assuming you kept it on single. And I'm sure that if you burst fired it would be fine anyway. But anyway, this is my favorite pistol that I'm holding right now. It's the M9 pistol. Uh, my, not my favorite from Battlefield 4. Battlefield 4, sorry, not my favorite from Battlefield 3. My favorite from Battlefield 3 is the M1911. But from Battlefield 4, the M9 is probably my favorite, simply because I like the feel and the sound and the kick on it, too. It, it just, if I wanted to own a gun in real life, I would own that. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get to the enemy carrier, and so I'm trying to hop on these to see if I can dupe the water system to kind of reverse them, but I can't. And there's no way to push them unless you have C4, so... Oops. And right here I'm just kind of demonstrating the floodgate raising and lowering type of thing. And actually here we've lost the three inner points, mostly because most of our forces have moved over to the enemy carrier and we're trying to oh, cap the MCOMs. MCOMs, the conquest points. So I've run out of ammo in my primary, so I effectively switched to my secondary and it doesn't end up working out too well because I think I'm a second or two late of firing and I can't see through the smoke so I didn't know where he had necessarily been. But I've only had one death so far, that's my second death, and it's actually my last death for this entire round. Like I said, these matches don't take that long, so it, it it's kind of hard to cram everything I want to talk about in the new Naval Strike into one episode, because I'm c considering I've got like a minute left. But still, this is what the enemy carrier on the inside looks like. They're both identical, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, what side? They're a little confusing to get rid of, to, to navigate. But anyway, right now I have, and yes, I did just take an RPG to the face. <laughs> right now I have an M, actually it was kind of the feet, but oh well. Anyway, I'm holding the uh, MG4 with a suppressor, a laser sight, and a hollow one-time sight, although I want to switch that out to a coyote sight. In fact, I'm not going to do that right after this. And here's one of the MCOMs. They just look like MCOMs. On the inside of the carrier, you blow them up, and you win, assuming that your carrier does not get blown up first. That's, uh, 
It's very cool. So yeah, I didn't use a sniper class because mostly sniping on this map is kind of hard because everybody's moving really quickly or is in boats or is inside. And look at that suppression assist, baby. That that was that was pretty sweet. But anyway, we are nearing the end of the video here, and this is essentially what Naval Strike is right now. It needs a couple fixes. Some things need updates. Although I do want to try out the cannons on Operation Mortar. <laughs> I also want to see a commander fire, mi fire a missile just to see what it looks like. From the infantry perspective, that is. Uh, so yeah, and I'm sorry I haven't had time to upload my uh, cruise missile montage. I actually haven't started doing that yet because I've been really busy and I'm going to be away actually this weekend and for the next two days. So I'm actually recording all and rendering all the episodes for those days tonight. So I am, I am pack. I'm damn busy in my schedule. So I'm sorry about that. I know I promised it last month and I know I promised it this week, but. I just can't seem to keep promises. Anyway, I would like to thank you guys for watching. Please remember to like, favorite, subscribe, comment, and all the good stuff. And I will see you guys next time. This is the Hexagon Zero, signing out.